Did Vasa August Falter Road Quig on Okaid E Rule Special to Shaw Our School One World Is Misha Paul O'Shea Khan Previda Public School Shride of Willing Is a Macht Fele E Shaw A Yen in Kailura Air an Egg Sulut Kultur at an R Mask Nihuan and Shaw a Public School Shride of Willing Ak O Kion Kion Natira Salah at our Nuvon You're very welcome to our online celebration of Our School One World I'm Paul O'Shea Khan, the principal of Minstreet Community School, and it is with immense pride that I launched this event on behalf of our whole school community. This is a production that has been primarily led by our transition year students, namely those involved in global citizenship education, along with our chaplain, Mr. John McGee. Cultural diversity is something we openly celebrate here in Minstreet Community School, and we encourage our students to be comfortable in themselves. Differences in the traditional cultural indicators of language, ethnicity, religion and nationality are celebrated in our community as the contributions in this production illustrate. Kegumi and Difriukti Adjing Ohev Kulturde is Uninshing Margwina, Augustization Eta Al Khedurving and Shaw. Bun Soltas, August Garamahur, Asokt Eveling, Kurmila. Thanks, Mr. Rashid Khan. Hello, everyone. My name is Esfer, and on behalf of the Transition Year Global Citizen Education Class of 2020 and 2021, I'd like to welcome you all to our school, One World, Culture and Diversity in Ministry Community School. Our school has been hosting events to celebrate the increase in cultural diversity in our area since 2006. Last year's event had to be cancelled because of the pandemic, so this year we are even more determined to celebrate all that the cultural diversity brings to our school community. During our event, you will hear about the different countries currently represented in our school. There will be contributions from past pupils, current teaching staff, members of the local community and others with a more national profile. They will be speaking about the value of cultural diversity, what can be done to encourage it and how we as individuals and as a society can challenge racism. There will be music performed by current pupils as well as renditions created by students with Court DJ, Stevie G and Gary McCarthy from GMC Beats. We are now going to begin with country presentations from Ireland, Italy, Lithuania, Poland and Romania. Dave shot a piece of bjog at Dave Aaron. The population of Ireland is roughly 4.9 million as of 2019. The flag of Ireland, or as we know it, the tricolour, was a gift to Thomas Francis Maher in 1848 from a group of French women who felt sympathetic towards the Irish cause. The white signifies lasting truce between the orange and green. The orange represents the Protestants and the green represents the Catholics. English and Irish are the prime languages in Ireland. English was brought to Ireland by the Cambrone Normans in the 12th century. Irish was the primitive language in Ireland up until the 12th century and the language has gone through many changes throughout the centuries. Ireland is made up of 26 counties and Northern Ireland is made up of six. They split in 1921, as Ireland had a desire to become independent. There was a failure to achieve home rule. Communities were deeply divided and there was always a threat of violence. Gaelic football, hurling and camogie are traditional Irish sports which are very popular. The finals of these events are held in Croke Park each year and the venue has served as home of the GA since 1891. Croke Park was the scene of a massacre in 1920 known as Bloody Sunday, at which 14 civilians were killed. Music plays a huge part in Irish culture, with events such as the Fla happening annually. Killarney National Park has many tourist hubs, such as Muckers House and Gardens, Tark Waterfall and Ross Castle. The Ring Carry is also very popular, as a charity cycle takes place there every year, and it allows people to see part of the county they would not normally see. Kilmainham Jail in Dublin is a jail with a great amount of history, including the executions of the signatories of the proclamation the, and the incarcerations of Michael Collins and Daniel O'Connell. Ireland joined the EU in 1973, and now there is many prominent Irish people in the European Parliament, such as Maria Walsh. Many Irish people have risen to worldwide fame, such as Dermot Kennedy and Sir Ronan. Ciao a tutti. Mi chiamo Oliver. I'm Oliver, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about Italy, its geography, culture, and sport. 
The country shares land borders with France, Switzerland, Austria, and Slovenia. It is over four times the size of Ireland, and its population is ten times bigger. The colors of the Italian flag represent the three virtues: hope, green; faith, white; and charity, red. Its nickname is Bel Paese, which means "beautiful country." The capital city, Rome, is often called the Eternal City. It was founded in 753 BC. It features many historical sites, like the Colosseum and the Saint Peter's Basilica. Other famous city and places to visit include Venice, Naples, Milan, Pisa, and Verona. In the south of Italy, you will find Italy's three active volcanoes: Vesuvius near Naples. Etna on Sicily, and Stromboli off the coast of Italy. Alessandro Volta was the pioneer who studied in electricity, hence the name volt, describing a unit of electricity. The Italian soccer league is very popular. Inter, Milan, Roma, Napoli, and Juventus are just some of the famous teams. Italy has won FIFA World Cup four times. Italians also love cycling, skiing, and motor racing. Grazie a tutti per l'ascolto. Ciao, mi chiamo Chiara. I'm going to speak to you a little bit about food and fashion in Italy. Real Italian food is served without sauces. The traditional food in Italy is polenta, which is mostly made up of maize and corn. It is one of the most common foods from the Roman legends. Italian pasta is renowned worldwide. There are more than two hundred different shapes. Pizza was invented in Napoli around eighteen sixty. Some famous fashion brands in Italy are Valentino, Prada, and Dolce & Gabbana. Prada was founded in nineteen thirteen by Mario and Martino Prada as a leather goods shop. Fashion has always been an important part of the country's culture, life, and society. As And Italians are well known for their attention of dressing up well. La bella figura, or a good impression, remains traditional. Thanks for listening and what we've got to say for, about Italy today. Grazie e ciao. I'm going to tell you a little about Lithuania. Lithuania is an Eastern European country. It is bordered by Belarus, Latvia, Poland, and Russia. It is slightly smaller than Ireland in terms of area. The population is about 2.7 million. The flag of Lithuania consists of a horizontal tricolor of yellow, green, and red. The yellow in the flag is meant to symbolize the sun and prosperity. The green is for the forests, the countryside, liberty, and hope, and the red represents the blood and bravery of those who have died for Lithuania. The language spoken in the country. Is Lithuanian. English is spoken by thirty percent of the population and eighty percent of the youth. The Lithuanian language is one of the oldest spoken in the world. The capital city is Vilnius. Basketball is the most popular sport in Lithuania, and like a second religion to them, it is much more than just a game to the country. Lithuanians celebrate two Independence Days, one on 16th of February, and another the day of the restoration of independence on the 11th of March. Thanks for listening to my presentation on Lithuania. Cześć, mam na imię Nikodem. Hi, my name is Nikodem. I'm in third year, and I come from Poland. Poland is situated in Central Europe, bordering Germany, the Czech Republic, Slovakia. Ukraine, Belarus, Lithuania, and Russia. The Polish flag is white and red. White standing for the hope of peace and red recalling the struggle for freedom over the centuries. This freedom is celebrated on the 11th of November, which is Poland's Independence Day, and it is also the national holiday of Poland. Poland has a population of almost 38 million people. And is over three and a half times bigger 
than Ireland area-wise, making it the ninth largest country in Europe. Poland is a very geographically diverse country, and over 30% of its area is covered by forests, making it the fourth most forested country in Europe. Poland also has various mountains, the tallest of which, Mount Rysy, stands at 2,503 metres tall. Poland is visited by thousands of tourists to see the various castles, museums and natural sites that it has to offer. Poland isn't only famous for its sites though, it also has a unique traditions like All Saints Day when people lit thousands of candles in cemeteries in remembrance of the dead, or Easter when a large number of branches and dried flowers is brought to church and also the blessing of the baskets. There is much more to be said but I'm running out of time. Thank you for listening. Romania Romania is located in East Central Europe, bordering on the Black Sea. It borders Bulgaria, Hungary, Moldova, Serbia and Ukraine. Romania is about three and a half times bigger than Ireland, and it has a population of 19 and a half million. The capital of Romania is Bucharest. Besides Romanian, languages spoken in Romania include Hungarian, Romani, German and Russian. The national flag of Romania is a tricolour with vertical stripes, blue, yellow and red. Sky blue for liberty, field yellow for justice, and blood red for fraternity. On the 26th of June every year, the Romanians have a flag day, when public authorities organise cultural and educational events devoted to Romanian history. The Roma people originated from northern India, but can be traced back to Romanian history to the 13th century. They were traditionally nomadic and speak a Romani dialect. However, today many people practice their culture in a modified form, with many no longer being nomadic. The people of Romania have an interest in a variety of sports, including soccer, handball, basketball, volleyball, gymnastics and a range of track and field events. Thanks for listening to this presentation about Romania. Thanks to Ella, Oliver, Kiera, Nico Den and Katie for those presentations. We are now going to hear from three past pupils of Mill Street Community School. Sarah Louise Burke, Nora O'Sullivan and Ailish Kelleher who are going to share their thought on the value of cultural diversity. That will be followed by Katie who will be singing a song called Tandragi and Aoife who will be playing a jig called A Mouse in the Mug. Cultural diversity adds a lot to our local community because we have such a wide diverse population here that we've had the opportunity to grow alongside people who might have different traditions and speak different languages or eat different foods and that creates a much better awareness and makes more well-rounded people. Because when you're seeing things like this you're more willing to embrace differences and change rather than be confused by it. I think something we could do to ensure that our communities are inclusive is we could in schools especially is definitely important students cultures like if there's a student in a class from a different country maybe in primary school you know explaining to the class and maybe getting them to talk a bit about what it was or maybe if they speak a different language you could teach the class a few words and things just to kind of normalize the differences because children are very impressionable and if you are used to this they won't take any notice of it and they'll be a lot more welcoming and they'll just be a lot more inclusive in general. Hi, my name is Nora. I'm a Leaving Cert MCS graduate 2019. So what I think cultural diversity adds to our community is that by gaining knowledge of other cultures, uh, you value your own culture more. You know, it puts you thinking about the similarities that exist between the different cultures, despite what we may have previously thought. And the very act of sharing about um, your culture kind of makes you want to learn more about our language, our history, our customs, traditions, etc. Cultural diversity is important because our country, workplaces and schools increasingly consist of various cultural, ra racial and ethnic groups. We learn from, from one another, but first we must have a level of understanding about each other. Learning about other cultures helps us understand different perspectives within the world in which we live 
and this helps um, to break down negative stereotypes. In addition, cultural diversity helps us to recognise and respect ways of being that are not necessarily our own so that we can interact with others and we can build bridges to respect and understanding across cultures. Furthermore, it makes our country a more interesting place to live in as people from other cultures contribu contribute language skills, new ways of thinking, new knowledge and different experiences. Good to look to all here now, barring the cat that sits in a corner there smelling a rat. Oh, wish your philandering girls and behave, and saving your presence, I'll chant you a stave. I come from the land where the bridges grow big, and the boys neat and handy can swirl in a jig. And the girls, they would charm your heart for to see. Those darling colleens round tender raggy. So here's to the boys who are happy and gay, singing and dancing and tearing away. Rollicks and frolics and frisky and free. We're the rollicking boys around tender raggy. No doubt you have heard of Killarney, I'm sure, and sweet it is shown for a drop of the pure. Dublin's the place for the strawberry beds and Donnybrook fair for the cracking of heads. for those lovely pieces. I would now like to welcome two members of our local community, Ailey Buckley and Inio Sanga, who will be speaking about why they think cultural diversity has a positive impact on a community. Cultural diversity has proven very important to us here in Midstreet. We are fortunate that we have a facility here where countless nationalities of people have come over the years and uh, have uh, from kind of um, you know, slow, slow starts. It has all proved very, uh, very successful. And uh, we have learned how to mix with people that we never thought uh, we would ever meet and they are comfortable with us. And especially now, because many of them have found jobs, got married and settled and had families and their children are going to school here with our children. And it's laying a very good foundation for the future for all of them because world uh, travel being as easy as it is today, our children would be going to many countries and they would um, find it very easy to fit in to places where these people came from. So I think that uh, cultural diversity is very important to us here in Mill Street. Communities in Ireland can benefit from diversity 
through different means. You know, um, diversity promotes creativity and innovation. It will obviously reduce racism and discrimination. It will make people feel more welcome and accepted in the communities in which they are living in. Communities in Ireland can benefit from diversity in different ways because different people bring different ideas. Different people are creative in their own unique way. Making people feel welcome in a community can be achieved by just being open and friendly, by being accommodating, not, not discriminating, and making people just feel that, you know, they are safe where they are, things. Thank you to you both for sharing your insights with us. We will now have some more country presentations, but this time about Bolivia, Kazakhstan, Pakistan, and Thailand. Hello, Aoife and I are going to tell you a little about Bolivia. Bolivia is a landlocked country in South America, bordering Brazil, Paraguay, Argentina, Chile, and Peru. The west half of the country is dominated by the huge Andes Mountains, with steep slopes and snow-capped peaks. It has a population of almost 11 million, and in terms of area, it is 16 times larger than Ireland. The official language is Spanish, and there are 36 indigenous languages. The national flag of Bolivia features three equal horizontal bands of red, yellow and green, with the Bolivian coat of arms featured on the yellow band at the centre of the flag. The red colour represents bloodshed and the bravery of those who lost their lives in the quest for independence and so virginity of Bolivia. The yellow colour represents the country's wealth and mineral deposits, while the green colour represents the richness of the country's agriculture and natural areas. It also symbolises hope. Bolivia's land is diverse and some of its features have broken records. Located on the border of Peru and Bolivia, Lake Titicaca is the world's highest lake that is deep enough for a boat to sail on. Stalar de Uni, found in the southwest of the country, is the world's largest saw flat. The world's highest forest sits more than 3,900 metres above sea level in Bolivia's Sahama National Park. The national dish of Bolivia is saltena. They are savoury pastries filled with beef, pork, or chicken, mixed in a sweet, slightly spicy or very spicy sauce, and sometimes also containing peas, potatoes and other things. They are typically eaten in midday as a snack. Thank you for listening to our presentation about Bolivia. Salim, Kushkildingiz, I'm Esper, and I'm going to be speaking to you about Kazakhstan, which is where I'm from. Kazakhstan is the largest country in Central Asia and the ninth largest in the world. It's 39 times larger than Ireland, but the population is only about three times bigger. It is surrounded by Russia, China, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan and the Caspian Sea. The flag of Kazakhstan features a sky blue background that represents the sky and water. It is used as a symbol of unity. The eagle, sun and ornamental pattern are all gold in colour. The languages mainly spoken are Russian and Kazakh. There are a number of important national days in the Kazakh calendar. The most significant one is Nowruz, which translates into New Year, as the Kazakh people celebrate the New Year on March 22nd. Kazakhstan holds some of the world's most gorgeous tourist attractions, like the stunning buildings in the cities, snow and ski resorts in the mountains, and the Charin Canyon. Kazakhs prepare the tastiest dishes and plates of food, which include manti, which are dumplings, siorpa is a soup or hot drink, and lagman, which are handmade stretched noodles. Kazakh culture is largely influenced by the nomadic lifestyle, which have a very beautiful and colourful culture. Instrumental music is called kui and performed by soloists using traditional Kazakh musical instruments, for example the dombra or koibiz. The Kazakh clothing worn by men is called the shapan, which is a long, loose robe, while the women wear a shirt-like garment called a koilek. I hope you found my presentation informative. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, my name is Fezan. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my country, Pakistan. Pakistan share a land border with Afghanistan, China, India, and Iran. The population of Pakistan is 201 million people, making it the sixth most populous country in the world. 
In the drama of area, Pakistan is 11 times bigger than Ireland. The national language of Pakistan is Urdu, although the official language is English. However, Punjabi is the most commonly spoken and is spoken by almost half the people of Pakistan. Islamabad is the capital city. Pakistan became independent in 1947. This is celebrated on 14 August. Pakistan's main exports are textile products, rice, cotton, leather goods. Indeed, about half of the soccer balls in the world are made in Pakistan. The Indus area which are covered the majority of Pakistan was home to some of the oldest known civilization. The Anatolic Magra people and the later Indus Valley civilization lived in, in the as area as long as 9000 years ago. The massive Krakram, Hindu Kush and Pamir mountain range to the north of Pakistan contain five of the highest peaks in the world over 8000 meters, including the world's second highest mountain K2 and Nanga Parbat. Pakistan's national sport is field hockey. Cricket is the most popular sport in Pakistan. Pakistan country has some of the most unique features, including the world's only fertile desert and the larger glacier outside of the polar region. Two Pakistanis have won the Nobel Peace Prize, Lala Yusuf and Abdul Salam. I hope you have some presentation. I hope you guys enjoyed my presentation about Pakistan. Thank you. Aslam. Thailand, officially the Kingdom of Thailand, is a country in Southeast Asia. Located at the center of the Indo-Chinese Peninsula, it is composed of 76 provinces and it's about seven times the size of Ireland. Thailand is the world's 50th largest country by land area and the 22nd most populous with over 66 million people. It is bordered by Myanmar, Laos, Cambodia, the Gulf of Thailand and Malaysia. Thailand, which means land of the free, was known as Siam until 1939. The capital and largest city is Bangkok. One tenth of the entire population of Thailand lives in Bangkok. It is the only Southeast Asian country that was never colonized by a European country. Thailand's flag stands for Nation, Religion, King, a kind of unofficial motto that Thai people live by. The red stripes represent Thailand's blood spilt in its bid to maintain independence. The white stands for purity and Buddhism, the country's primary religion. The blue symbolizes the Thai monarchy. The blue stripe also has a double meaning as it stands in solidarity and honors Thailand's World War I allies, namely Great Britain, France, the United States and Russia, which all have red, white and blue flags. 16 million tourists fly into Thailand each year. Iconic attractions include the stunning islands in the south, the diverse street food scene in Bangkok and the thousands of temples scattered across the country. Around 90% of Thai people are Buddhist. Lotus flowers are common and the favourite flower in Thailand. Mai Thai boxing is Thailand's national sport. Thailand is the world's largest exporter of rice. Food in Thailand is influenced by Chinese and Indian cultures. Most Thai dishes are spicy and many common dishes include hot chilies, lemongrass, basil, ginger, and coconut milk. Thank you for listening to my presentation about Thailand. Thanks to David, Aoife, Faizan, and Lauren for those presentations. We will now be hearing from three of our current teachers, Chris Horn, Jennifer O'Donoghue, and John McGee, who will be speaking about cultural diversity. They will be followed by Anna, who will be singing a beautiful piece in Irish called Vaidan Var, which means the mermaid. How does uh, cultural diversity add to our community. Well, in my school days, we only ever had one cultural viewpoint. And now we have a much, much broader view with cultural diversity. And this can only be a good thing. Uh, in education, having a wider range of viewpoints really helps open up discussions on literature and helps with collaborative learning. Tonight's event, Celebrating Diversity uh, and Fostering Respect, uh, ensures inclusivity in our community. As humans, we are constantly evolving and learning, and a day where we do not learn something is a sad day. Cultural diversity certainly adds to our understanding and our learning because we get to know about different cultures, different backgrounds, different ethnicities, and that can all only make a better society. I think cultural diversity is very valuable to a local community because it exposes us to different perspectives and viewpoints. It provides us with the opportunity to broaden our minds and make us more empathetic towards people who come from many other countries 
and whose life experiences are very different to our own. Thank you for that, Anna. I would now like to introduce you to our next three contributors. First, we will be hearing from Sandri Nadihiro, who is the creator behind the recent documentary on silencing black voices. Her Excellency, Alnana Sohanska, who is the current Polish ambassador to Ireland, and Valerie Mole, a social activist and former youth delegate for Ireland to the United Nations. Communities can be made more inclusive by creating and having a space for where those of migrant background or anything like that can feel free to come in into the different communities and contribute and have their voices heard and I think it's very pivotal for that to happen because we've seen how modern day and contemporary day Ireland showcases how we're so diverse and we're so multicultural so within these community spaces it should mirror the changing attitude of Ireland and within these community spaces there should be um, healthy dialogue and more spaces for people to explore how again the changing nature of the Irish identity how that's like to be Irish no longer means to be white so within those communities we have to have different shades of Irishness there in order to showcase how our communities are ever growing and how they're going to continuously grow because as I stated Ireland is so multicultural and so diverse and there's just a um, multitude of ways of being Irish so our communities should really really reflect on this and the best way that they're going to reflect on that is through inclusion. Hello everyone, my name is Anna Sochańska and I am the ambassador of Poland to Ireland. Let me tell you why I think cultural diversity is very important to our communities and to us as individuals. I have traveled a lot to different countries even before I became a diplomat. And I think that this experience of getting to know other people and other countries was very valuable for me. It taught me great empathy and openness, as well as respect towards what is different. I think in general, cultural diversity makes us richer as individuals and enriches our communities greatly. I am very proud to be ambassador of Poland to Ireland, representing so many Polish people living here. I am also delighted how well the Irish and the Polish get on 
and how easily they find common ground in everyday life. Let me say a few words in Polish to our Polish students. Kochani, jesteście wspaniałymi ludźmi. Bardzo Wam dziękuję za to, że tak pięknie reprezentujecie Polskę w Irlandii. Wy również jesteście ambasadorami Polski. Dziękuję Wam za to i życzę wszystkiego najlepszego. Thank you very much and I wish you a great language and culture night. If you were to ask me, what can we do to make our society more inclusive? I would say, let's all try so hard to avoid the single story. What I mean by that is just prejudice. It's stories that you've heard about what it is to be Irish, what a black person is, what it means to be a refugee or someone from a different religion. All those assumptions that we have for each other are single story. In each one of us, we're so much more than that single story that we see portrayed in media or that we've heard even in books that we've read that have established in us a they and us. And it's only by working and accepting that people are more complex than that and people have way more to offer that we start to respect and value our differences rather than rejecting them. That's how we make our society more inclusive because we give space for, for people to be who they are to the best of their ability. And that is how it's going to serve our society as well. So in a nutshell, for me, it's really trying to go beyond what you think you know about people um, is the way that we're going to make our society more inclusive by respecting the differences that exist between us valuing them because they have an ad, because they add something to our society. Thanks to each of you for sharing your experiences and insights about cultural diversity and what local communities can do to encourage it. Now for something completely different. We will now experience La Diversité, which is a sound collage of words and thoughts from transition year and fifth year students aided by music from Cork DJ Stevie G, celebrating the different languages spoken in our school. La diversité, we are together. La diversité, together we got power. La diversité, la diversité est important. We are together. La diversité, la diversité. Let's get together. La diversité est importante. La diversité. La diversité est importante. Diversity gives the world different perspectives to solve problems. We can learn from people who come from different cultures. It diminishes stereotypes about different races. It makes people unique, whether it be by clothing, food, religion or music. Which can help us to understand different perspectives from around the world. We are together! I think that in Ireland, the culture is important, because people know new languages. We know other cultures and we know each other. Cultural inclusion is vital to embrace diversity and value all unique contributions to the world. Thank 
Thanks to Stevie G and the students for creating such an interesting piece, which ties in so well with the theme of our event. We will now have our final group of country presentations, this time from the Democratic Republic of Congo, Nigeria, South Africa, and Zimbabwe. Bote Mandeko, greetings to you all. My name is Josias, and today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about my country, which is the Democratic Republic of Congo, or DRC for short. The DRC is the second largest country in Africa. It borders nine countries, including Rwanda, South Sudan, Tanzania, Uganda, and more. The people of the DRC represent over 200 ethnic groups, with nearly 250 languages and dialects spoken throughout the country. Kinshasa, the capital, is the second largest French-speaking city in the world. The DRC is 33 times the size of Ireland. The colors of the national flag are blue, representing peace, red, the blood of the nation's merits, and yellow, the wealth of the nation. The star on the flag symbolizes the country's bright future. The national holiday on the 30th of June marks DRC's independence from Belgium in 1960. Since the 1960s, the Congolese endured over two decades of armed conflict, with over 5.4 million people dead due to, co to war-related causes, making it the deadliest conflict since World War II. The DRC is amongst the most resourceful rich countries on the planet, with an abundance of gold, titanium, tungsten, and tin. All minerals used in electronics such as mobile phones and laptops, yet it continues to have an extremely poor population. Former NBA All-Star Dikembe Mutombo was born in the Democratic Republic of Congo in 1997. He founded a humanitarian foundation to improve the health, education, and quality of life for the people in DRC. The oldest national park in Africa is the Congo's Virunga National Park. It is home to rare mountain gorillas, lions, and elephants. Pule amwamb, or chicken in a mwamb sauce, is considered DRC's national dish. Mwamb is a type of palm butter made from ground palm nuts. I hope you've learned some things you didn't know about my country. Merci beaucoup et au revoir. Ekelemu greetings. My name is Lillian and myself and Fate are going to tell you about our country our country in Nigeria and about our tribes. Nigeria is often called the giant of Africa because it is a huge country with many different peoples and languages. It's oil and other res other natural resources. It has a population of two hundred and three million and an area that is thirteen times bigger than Ireland. It shares land borders with Benin, Niger, Chad, Cameroon, and it meets the Atlantic Ocean on, on the southern coast. The, uh, the official language in Nigeria is English, but there are over 250 other local languages spoken in the country. Nigeria gained independence from Britain in 1960, and this is celebrated on 10th October each year. Our flag is green, white, green, three color flags. The green stripes represent the wealth in the, country, in the country, and the white band represents peace. Nigeria is the most country politically and economically in West Africa, and holds considerable power. Its most important export is oil, more than half of which is shipped to the United States. Abuja in central Nigeria is the country's capital, although Lagos, which is a port on the southern coast, has the biggest population almost 15 million, making it the second largest city in Africa after Kuro in Egypt. I'm going to tell you a little about the Igbo tribe to which I belong. The Igbo, tribe, the Igbo people are an ethnic group in West Africa. We are one of the largest ethnic groups in Africa. We Igbo speak the Igbo language. The Igbo people are found in, in certain eastern Nigeria in an area referred to as Igbo land. As for wedding attire, Igbo women wear different styled embodied tops over two George wrappers, a head headgear in chafu and caro beads. Others use a George fabric to make a long dress and, and style their heads with caro beads. Emela Igemunti 
Let me now hand, o- o- hand you over to Faith. Hi, my name is Faith, and I'm going to tell you about the Yoruba tribe, which I belong to. The Yoruba tribe makes up 21% of Nigeria's population and most speak the language Yoruba. And I'm also going to tell you a little about traditional wedding attire. The woman's cloth is made out of hand-woven wool called Asha Ok. This is woven into a dress called a komole and worn with a shawl known as ipele and headwear called a gile. The male attire involves a shirt called a buba and pants called shukuto and agwada. Thank you for listening to our presentation on Nigeria. Hello, my name is Iman. Me and Alicia are going to tell you about South Africa. South Africa is home to the cradle of humankind. The colorful mix of cultures gives South Africa its nickname, Rainbow Nation. South Africa is the only country in the world with three capitals, Pretoria, Cape Town and Bloemfontein. South Africa is the world's largest coal producer. In term area, South Africa is 17 times larger than Ireland. South Africa is home to the world's highest commercial bungee jump at 710 feet. The world's first first heart transplant was completed in in Cape Town, South Africa. Table Mountain in Cape Town is one of the oldest mountains in the world. Many different people make up South Africa, each with their own language and history. The country has 11 official languages, which include Afrikaans, English, Ndebele, Kosa, and Zulu. Natural resources, agriculture, tourism, and manufacturing have made South Africa the largest economy on the continent. South Africans are passionate about music, often using song and dance to express social and political ideas. We're also known worldwide for our skills in sports, including rugby, cricket, golf, and soccer. In fact, South Africa is now the only country in the world to have hosted the Soccer, Cricket, and Rugby World Cup. Major tourist attractions include Kruger National Park, Table Mountain, Blight River Kenya, which is the world's third largest canyon, and Robben Island when Nelson Mandela was imprisoned. Four South Africans have won the Nobel Peace Prize, including Nelson Mandela and Archbishop Desmond Tutu. We hope you have enjoyed learning about our country. Thank you. Kialibuha, Siawonga. Farewell, goodbye. Hi, my name is Brandon and I'm going to tell you a little about my country, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is a landlocked country in South Africa known for its dramatic landscape and diverse wildlife, much of it within parks, reserves and safari areas. Its five bordering countries are Botswana, Mozambique, South Africa, Zambia and Namibia. Zimbabwe is almost six times the size of Ireland. There are a total of 16 official languages spoken in Zimbabwe the most popular of which are English, Shona, and Debele. The national flag features the colors yellow, red, and black. Yellow stands for the wealth of minerals in the country, predominantly gold. The red symbolizes the bloodshed during the struggles for independence. The black indicates the heritage, race, ethnicity of the black majority. The white triangle is a symbol for peace. The country gained official independence from Great Britain on 18 April 1980 and its name was changed from Rhodesia to Zimbabwe. The government held independence celebrations in Salisbury, which has been known as Harare since 1982 and is the capital of Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe has five UNESCO heritage sites. These include the Victoria Falls, which is located on the Zambez River and is also one of the seven natural wonders of the world. Sport in Zimbabwe has a long tradition and has produced many world-recognizing sports, names and personalities. Football is the most popular, although rugby union, cricket and netball also have a following. Field hockey is also played widely. The country has won Olympic gold medals in swimming and hockey. The national, fl- the national dish of, the, of Zimbabwe is called sadza. It is made from cornmeal or maize and eaten with vegetable stew or meat such as beef or chicken. Olivia Mutukudzu was a singer, songwriter, actor, writer, film director and entrepreneur with over 60 albums to his name. 
He was one of Zimbabwe's top musicians and lead of the black band The Black Spirits. Mutukudu was one of the few Zimbabweans whose music has international appeal. I hope you've enjoyed my presentation about Zimbabwe. Thank you for listening. Thanks to Josais, Faith, Lillian, Iman, Alicia and Brandon for those presentations. In the next part of our event, we will be exploring ways in which we can respond to the challenge posed by racism in Irish society. To begin with, we will now hear again from three of our teachers speaking on the subject. So how can we challenge racism in our society? Well, we need to be aware and be open to what's going on around us, uh, in society and in school. It's a cliche, but it's true. If you're not part of the solution, then you're part of the problem. So don't think it has nothing to do with you. If you see a racist message doing the rounds on social media, just simply don't forward it. Uh, it's very simple. And if a friend is doing or saying something that might offend, pull them aside, say it to them quietly. Uh, or, if you wish, you could tell a member of staff in the school. Because we can hurt others by what we say or do, sometimes we don't even realise it. And it can so easily be avoided if we take that bit of responsibility ourselves. To change a community's attitude, one has to start with the self. So really, we have to make one change in our own understanding, in our own attitude, and hopefully that will make our community a more inclusive one. If we want to challenge racism in our society, or any society, I don't think we'd be, we can be neutral bystanders anymore. I think we need to adopt an anti-racist approach. I think we need to be prepared to call out racism when we see it. And it might just be in small things, but that can be how it all starts. Thanks to Mr Horne, Ms O'Donoghue and Mr McGee for their reflections on how we can play an active role against racism. We are now going to hear from Ms Valerie Molay and Ms Sandrine De Hero, and then from Ireland's Ombudsman for Children, Dr Nal Muldoon. My name is Valerie Molay. I'm a social justice activist and a former UN Youth Delegate for Ireland. If you were to ask me, how can we challenge racism within our society? I strongly believe that knowledge is power. So I would say, let's start asking yourself the right question. What is racism? How does it actually, uh, how is racism at play in my life? Whether I am a racialized person, black person going through a journey of asking myself why do I fit in my society or whether I'm someone that is actually benefiting from a racist system what we call white privilege it's like oh it's because of who I am the color of my skin that I'm able to get into this space and other people might find it hard to get into this space so I think it's like by taking a journey with ourselves, be kind to yourself but take a journey asking the right questions why is this system still in place? Who is actually, what powers are at play? Who is uh, making sure that this keeps to whose benefit? And I, and I think it's only after we do take the journey with ourselves that we can be better allies, that we can stand up for ourselves better, that we can also start to change our behavior and that we could reflect the society that we need to see. I very much think there is no point of calling people out and all of this stuff if you haven't even yourself gotten through the journey of knowing what is at play when we're talking about racism and what impact that does it have in a society that we have. In order to know the society that we need, we have to envision it. And the only way we can envision it is by knowing, first of all, what is wrong with the current one. So... How do we challenge racism? We take time for ourselves to question the system itself and then see yourself, be, be open to yourself to finding out actually what role do I play in this? What power is it? What power do I have that I can make change? What is my limitation? What else is necessary to do in order to get us over the edge in a better society where everyone will be equal? The best way to challenge racism within our society is by making sure that we're continuously talking about the injustices that are happening towards um, different ethnic minorities, 
within their Irish context. I think it's very important that when it comes to challenging racism, we, we challenge every form of it. So this goes beyond the Black Lives Matter movement, which looks at um, talk about racism from the Black and African experience. We need to talk about it within the traveler community and the Asian community and all other ethnic minorities. And again, the best way to do this is by making sure that we move away from this debate on whether or not racism exists in Ireland and we look at it like it does exist, but what way can we move forward as a society to engage with these conversations and just to remove the topic of racism being seen as a taboo topic. Only then, once we acknowledge that um, within the Irish society, racism is ingrained within our society, only then can we really move forward to addressing and finding appropriate ways to tackle racism in Ireland. Hi to everyone in Mill Street Community College. My name is Niall Muldoon. I'm the Ombudsman for Children. And I've been asked by Mr McGee to consider the question, what do we need to do to challenge racism in our com community? I suppose from my point of view, children's rights are hugely important. And we need to challenge racism to ensure that every child in the country feels welcomed and integrated and equal in our society. And we all have a role to play in that. Whether we're 100 generations of Irish, whether we're brand new to Ireland, whether politicians or students, we all need to welcome our fellow man to Ireland to help them overcome any sort of racism. We need to stand up. And as children who I spoke to in court before said to me, it's not sufficient to just be not racist. You have to be actively anti-racist. And that's what we all need to do today. We need to stand up and be counted and make sure that we say enough is enough. Racism is not allowed. I will challenge it every time I see it. I will point it out where I have to. And I will try and facilitate the integration of every person into our country and into our community. Because for me, diversity is key. We've 17% of our population are non-nationals originally. And that's a fantastic change in our country. It gives us opportunities. It gives us variety. It gives us diversity. It gives us new curiosities. It gives us new opportunities. So let's welcome it. Let's embrace the diversity that we have in Ireland now. And let's make sure that nobody has to suffer racism into the future. I wish you all the very, very best. And hopefully I'll see you again soon in a face-to-face -face manner. Thank you very much. We are grateful for Miss Mole, Miss Nahiro and Dr Muldoon for sharing their thoughts on how to work against racism in our society. We are now going to hear a song created by Maria, Tomas, Cathy, Anna and myself with the guidance and expertise of Gary McCarthy. Gary runs GMC Beats and facilitates Songs in a Day workshops. This song, which is called We Are One, arose from workshops he had with us, exploring the theme of culture and diversity to the run-up of this event.
behalf of the other TY students involved, I'd like to thank Gary McCarthy for the work that he did with us, taking our lyrics and ideas and helping us create something memorable. We will now move on to our final guest speakers. You are going to hear about an organisation called Sanctuary Runners. Sanctuary Runners was established in 2018 to enable Irish residents to run alongside and in solidarity with people seeking asylum in Ireland. You will first hear from Neve Necroher, who is Sanctuary Runners Regional Officer, covering the Cork and Kerry area. And then from Abigail, who was based in Mill Street and an active Sanctuary Runner member. Hello, my name is Neve and I'm a Sanctuary Runner in Cork. The Sanctuary Runners are a group of people from all walks of life who run and walk and jog with asylum seekers living in the direct provision system in Ireland. We're based on solidarity, friendship and respect. Your local direct provision centre in Mill Street is Drishan Castle, where we have a number of runners who have been involved in our activities across Cork and Kerry. And we would love to get a group organised in Mill Street. We have started as a small group in Cork three years ago, and we now have more than 24 groups dotted around the country, including Tralee, Killarney, Mallow and Cork. And it would be just wonderful to get a group going in the community uh, with those in Drishan Castle and Mill Street. If you're over 18 and are, you're interested in learning more or getting involved, or perhaps you might know someone who's interested in getting involved, please do get in contact to our website, www.sanctuaryrunners.ie, at sanctuaryrunners.ie, to find out more. I'm going to hand you over to Abigail, who is going to talk a little bit about what it has meant for her being involved with the Sanctuary Runners. Thank you so much. Good day, my name is Abigail and I've been with Sanctuary Runners for three years now. Sanctuary Runners is about solidarity, respect and friendship. The main aim for Sanctuary Runners is to promote inclusion for people in the direct provision and Aslam seekers in Ireland, in the Irish society. Through the marathons that I've done with um, Sanctuary Runners, I've gained a lot. I've managed to meet new people. I've managed to create friends. And I've managed to meet different people from different uh, backgrounds, different cultures, which is a very good thing to know about people in the world. Sanctuary Runners... Um, They've done a lot, especially in the times of uh, COVID-19. We still connected because we do our visual running and we do exercises on YouTube, which keeps people connected, especially people in the direct provision as they are prone to depression and mental health. You know, there's a saying which says, uh, friends are the family we choose. Sanctuary Runners, we're not just uh, runners. Sanctuary Runners is the family we choose. Many thanks to Neve and Abigail for speaking about the positive impact that Sanctuary Runners has had in communities, bringing Irish residents together with people in the asylum process through a common bond, the love for running. As we approach the end of our school, One World, Culture and Diversity in Mill Street Community School, I'd like to say a word of thanks on behalf of the TY Global Citizen Education class to a number of people. To all of you who have been watching this event online, we hope that we've been able to entertain you, inform you, and maybe challenge you to consider what cultural diversity means, the positive impact it can have on a community, and what we can do to challenge racism when it occurs in our society. To the members of the GCE class who have contributed to the planning of this event, to all the students, from first years to leaving certs, who contributed to the content through spoken word, music, and song. For a final word of thanks, I'd like to hand over to our chaplain, Mr. John McGee. Thanks very much, Esther, for all the hard work and preparation you put into being our MC. You fulfilled the role really well and should be proud of the way you guided us through such a busy programme. As we approach the end of our school, One World, Culture and Diversity in Mill Street Community School, I'd like to thank a number of people without whom this event would not have taken place. To begin with, I'd like to thank our principal, Paul Sheacon, Deputy Principal Francis Morden, Transition Year Coordinator Shane Gearan, and all our staff for their ongoing support in helping to make global citizenship education 
an integral part of school life in Mill Street, both inside and outside of the classroom. Allied to this, we are indebted to Worldwide Global Schools for the support for our efforts. I'd like to offer a special word of thanks to colleagues Chris Horn and Jennifer O'Donoghue for not only taking part in our presentation, but for being valuable signing boards for various ideas that arose in the planning process. Thanks good of past pupils to Sarah Louise Burke, Nora O'Sullivan and Eilish Kelleher for providing video contributions so willingly on the theme of cultural diversity. A word of thanks also goes to our current students who spoke so eloquently about the countries represented in our school at this time. Thank you for both informing us and broadening our minds. In the planning process for this event, we were keen to invite people living locally to participate. So I'd like to thank Eile Buckley and Ine Usanga for answering this call and for sharing their thoughts on the positive impact that cultural diversity can have on a community. We are lucky to have a large Polish community in Mill Street, and that was the principal reason why I approached Polish Ambassador to Ireland, Her Excellency Anna Sohinska, to ask if she might share her thoughts on cultural diversity. We are very grateful that she was willing to do so. Sandrine and Dehiro and Valerie Mole both have a wealth of experience in a range of disciplines, and we are grateful that they were willing to share their thoughts on cult what cultural diversity can contribute to a community and on the ways in which racism can be challenged in our society. We are grateful for the involvement of Ombudsman for Children, Dr. Niall Mondoon, in our presentation. A number of our current and past students who have lived or are living in direct provision have participated in projects run by his office, so it made perfect sense to invite him to take part. His insights into how we might respond to racism are greatly appreciated. We heard Neve Nikrohoa and Abigail speak about Sanctuary Runners. As we heard, it provides a great opportunity for Irish residents to run alongside and in solidarity with people seeking asylum in Ireland, thereby creating a context for genuine engagement and integration. If anyone would like to get involved, sanctuaryrunners.ie is a place to go to to find out more. We'd like to thank Cork DJ Steve, Stevie G for supporting our event by bringing together the words and thoughts of some of our students on the theme of diversity and then putting them to music. Thanks also go to Gary McCarthy for providing our TYs with the opportunity to create a song exploring the theme of culture and diversity, which they called We Are One. I must express my gratitude to the TY students in the Global Citizens of Education class this year for their ideas, feedback and commitment to ensure that this event took place. A special word of thanks goes to Chloe for her tireless work in the production of this event. I am very grateful to her for the time and effort she devoted to the whole process. Finally, thanks to all of you, wherever you are, for joining our school, One World, Culture and Diversity in Mill Street Community School.